What's going on YouTube? Dave here from SignalWarren.com. Hey, tonight we're going to talk about PowerShell's Desired State Configuration Manager. So what this thing is, is it's a powerful management platform outside of the typical window or Microsoft based enterprise uh, tools such as SCCM and all that kind of stuff. Very powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I'm just going to go over the basics. It's available in PowerShell v4 or greater, so it ships natively with Server 2K12 R2 and Windows 8.1. My box is currently 5.1, so I'm running Windows 10 Pro. It is a declarative model, so this kind of it's a little bit different than typical PowerShell uh, commands look, and I'll show you a, an example of that. So in our typical PowerShell, if I wanted to say check, if, make sure a service is running, and if a service is not running, I'm going to start it. So this is one way I would do it in a regular PowerShell command. I'm going to get the service. I'm going to look for the service MS Exchange Transport because my transport service needs to be started for Exchange to work. I want to look for it in a running status. So then I use this if statement. If it's not in a running status, I'm going to go ahead and start it. So what declarative model is in uh, Desired State Configuration Manager, you basically tell DSC what you want and it figures out the how. So here in this little script you can tell it's pretty simple. I'm going to use the service provider, or not provider, resource, service resource. And this comes built in with DSC. I'm going to tell it the name of the service and I'm going to just tell it that I want it to always be in a running status. So it's, it's that simple. A little different than a regular PowerShell, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, pretty simple. So DSC uses the workflow engine, and on the target nodes, the local configuration manager is the engine that runs in the background that actually makes the magic happen. Very good for scaled management. You can do it a couple different ways, push or pull architecture. I'm going to talk about the push tonight because it's the easiest. And it's the less, you don't have to have another server, uh, a pool architecture, which I'll probably do in another video. You will ha you have to stand up uh, a server with DSC uh, feature installed. If you want more information, there's a link on MSDN that you can get a little more information on it. So to kind of understand what DSC is doing, there's a little bit of a terminology you need to understand. So DSC resource, you can think of that as a PowerShell module. And if so, this is a, a basic Windows 10 box with our set tools installed. So you should get the same kind of output here. So if I do get DSC resource, so this is going to give me a list of all the default resources that are included with DSC. And then here you can see the service, which is the one we'll be using tonight. But there's a file, uh, environment group. There's there's all kinds of resources, and you can get more at powershellgallery.com so I want to find all my commands that are available in DSC I can run this little command right here git command dash noun DSC star and there are all my built-in DSC functions now again this is out of the box DSC configuration it doesn't include all the bells and whistles that you can get uh, off of PowerShell Gallery or other places so let's say I want to choose a particular resource. So I'm going to, this, I'm going to look at the file, and then I'm going to see what I can uh, configure here. So this is what I configure, a file attribute, the checksum, credentials. I can uh, run resources in DSC and make them dependent upon one another. So I can run them in a certain order, uh, which I'll probably expand on this video and show you how to do that with all of the Exchange services at some point. All right, so the configuration is done on the target via a MOF file, and I'll go through how you create the MOF files. Well, let's talk about the nodes. The nodes are simply your target machines. And again, I talked about the LCM already. So this is kind of the way I do DSC. First, I want to define the problem or what I want to monitor. In this case, I want to monitor uh, an exchange service to make sure it's running. Then I'm going to create the LCM config. Now this is an optional step. You don't necessarily have to do this unless your LCM config is outside of the default. And I'll show you the default here in a second. 
Then you're going to create your configuration. Optimally, you want to test your configuration before you deploy it in a production environment. Then you basically push it to the nodes, and then you're in a monitor state. So you can test DSC configuration at certain intervals manually, or you set up as a job to do it. And Okay, so push architecture. This is basically what we're looking at tonight. So I can take any client laptop running PowerShell v4 or above, create my configuration here, and push it to any number of clients on my network. It's really that simple. All right, so let's get into creating an actual configuration. Let me clear the screen. All right, so here is my basic LCM configuration. So in order to uh, create the moth file, I want to load this function into memory. So I'm going to highlight it here. There you go. Now I'm going to generate my moth file calling my function with computer name and then the name of whatever computer I want to push it to. So in this case, I'm only doing it with my Exchange server, which is EXCH. That's the actual computer name. If I want to do more than one, I can comma separate them, DC1, or I could import them through a text file. Okay, so it says my MAW file has been created. Now let's look here. So I'm in C scripts, my LCM config, which is my function name. Let's look at this MAW file. And here you can say it created it for the Exchange server created by me on this date. And here is the configuration that we want to make. Okay, so let's check the default configuration on the Exchange server right now. You'll see that the configuration mode frequency is set to 15 minutes. So let's push this config. So I'm going to use set-dsc local configuration manager commandlet and give it a path of lcm config. So that's lcm config folder in C scripts. Okay, so supposedly my configuration has been pushed to the Exchange server. So let's take a look at it again. And now you can see that the configuration mode frequency in minutes has changed to 30. So LCM configuration, just that simple. All right, so let's get to the nuts and bolts of it as far as creating a, uh, a configuration for the Exchange server. So it's very similar to the way you did the LCM configuration. I'm going to call it configuration, create a function using the configuration command. I'm going to call it Exchange Service. Same thing here. I'm going to ask it for a parameter of a computer name. It's going to default to localhost my target node to the computer name, and this is what I'm going to do on each target. So I want to use the service resource. I want to make sure this service is in a running state. So to generate my configuration MAW file, I'm just going to call my function using the computer name parameter, and this is the name of my Exchange server. And the same thing here applies if I wanted to do this to more than one computer, I could comma separate computer names or import them from a CSV file or text file, however you wanted to do it. All right, so let's generate this. Okay, it's loading. So it tells us it is created and it's going to be in Cscripts Exchange Service. So there is our MAW file. All right, so the MAW file looks very much the same as the LCM config. So there's the target who created it, what date, and this is basically what I want to do. I want this MX ex Exchange Transport Service in a running state. We've generated our moth, so we're going to use Start DSC Configuration, give it a path of Exchange Service, which is on C scripts. We're going to use the dash weight and verbose, which is going to tell you basically how it's going through the configuration process. So this is going to push the configuration. All right, DSC configuration complete. So now let's check the configuration. And this tells us that there's a configuration on there that starts the MS Exchange transport service in a running state. Okay, so detect drift. So let me go to my Exchange server. Okay, I'm looking at my Exchange server now. I'm going to stop that service manually. Where is it? MS Exchange transport. 
Okay, so my transport service finally stopped. Alright, so our service has stopped on the exchange server. Now let's test the configuration. So test DSC. It came back as false, so that exchange service is not running on my exchange server. So there are a couple ways we can do this to start this. And actually I need to put in force on here. I can use start DSC configuration, force. This will rerun my configuration. I'm not sure what that error message is. Let's see if it actually applied the configuration. Yep, it did restart the service. All right, so that's the basics of the DSC push model. It's not dynamic at all. It's There's a lot of manual testing and reapplying configuration if you detect drift. Uh, but you can set this test DSC configuration, command it up to run at a certain period every day and notify an administrator if there is a problem. The good thing with this is it takes nothing more than a client computer you can push it out to any machine, provided it's running PowerShell v4 and above. Now you can do this a little more dynamically using the pull model, which will probably be my next video, and we'll go over that. So, uh, appreciate you watching. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, hit me in the comments on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you wish. And thank you again.